Welcome everyone to the A10 Quick Start Series, brought to you by Quantum Networks. The first two videos in this series will be the A10 vThunder installation on VMware vSphere 6.5. Here's our full agenda for the afternoon, but I won't read all that out loud. Who is Quantum Networks? Quantum Networks is a Texas-based IT reseller implementing data center technologies with a strong emphasis on security everywhere. My name is Marco Octavian and I've been working with application delivery controllers and load balancers for a very long time. I started out with the first generation F5 Big IP 500 series all the way up to today. Along the way I've also worked with Kemp and Netscaler, Radware, etc. I started working with ATN several years ago and ATN has now become my de facto go standard for ADC solutions. And I've also worked with VMware NSX and their load balancer. So I've been doing this for quite a while. Intro to the ATN Quick Start series. This series is a set of short videos made to be quick and to the point to get you up and running as fast as possible. Okay, ATN vThunder installation on VMware vSphere 6.5. And the image we'll be installing is the vThunder 4.1.1 P9. And let's begin. First, let's do a quick review of our lab drawing. On the left, you can see there's a picture of a uh, physical host, what we might call the bare metal. And the VMware hypervisor software is installed on top of that. And then the A10 appliance is installed on top of the hypervisor. On the right side is a very basic drawing of what we'll be working with today. The A10 appliance, when it first gets deployed, it creates three network interfaces by default. The management interface and two Ethernet interfaces. The management interface will reside on the 192.168.41.0 subnet with a 24-bit mask. The Ethernet 2 interface will be the 10.1.10.0 subnet also with a 24-bit mask. This is the subnet where the virtual IPs will relive. The Ethernet 1 interface. This is the 10.1.20.0 subnet also with a 24-bit mask. And this is where the servers themselves reside. The Ethernet interfaces are called data interfaces by ATN. This is because these are the interfaces that pass the actual application and client data traffic itself. Pretty straightforward, I think. The first thing we need to do is deploy the OVA and we'll do that using vCenter. So go to your preferred cluster or host, right click on it, click deploy OVF template, click on local file, browse, choose the A10 image that you downloaded, click next, change the name if desired or needed, Verify you have the correct destination resource. Click next again. Click the accept button and click next. Choose the correct data store if you have multiple. And once again, as I mentioned previously in regards to the lab drawing, the A10 appliance by default will create three network interfaces. The first one being management. And for management, I'm going to use the standard VM network port group because it's always up. And for Ethernet 2, that's our 10.1.10.0 subnet on VLAN 10. And that's the subnet where the virtual IPs reside and is facing the client. I created these port groups ahead of time, of course, as you can see. Uh, and then the Ethernet 1 interface is the 10.1.20.0 subnet, which is VLAN 20. Click Next. Click Finish. And let's give the appliance uh, just a minute or two to deploy. Okay, the deployment has finished. Oh yes, the distributed port groups. Click on the network configuration, 
Now we'll take this one as an example. These are the two poor groups I created earlier. The uh, VLAN 10 and VLAN 10, uh, 20, I'm sorry, for 10.1.20. All that matters, and all I did different on these uh, VLAN poor groups, they're very standard configurations. I just made sure it had the correct VLAN ID. That's it. I gave it a name and gave it the correct VLAN ID. There's the name. VLAN ID should be the 20 because the 10.1.20.0 is VLAN 20. And that's all I did. This question comes up a lot, so I want to make sure real clear about how simple it really is. Okay. Configuring management access. Before I start this section, let me go ahead and go back to my VM, go back to the A10 appliance, and I'm going to power it on. Click on the screen, let a new tab open up. As you can see, the A10 appliance is booting up. Okay, A10 ACOS CLI commands. We're going to configure the management interface with an IP address, a default gateway. Then we're going to issue the appropriate show run command to verify the configuration. And then we'll ping our default gateway to verify connectivity is in place. Now the ACOS CLI, or Advanced Core Operating System CLI, is very Cisco-like. So if you've been on any Cisco switch for the last umpteen years, or an HPE, a Ruber Pro Curve switch, etc., it's going to look and feel pretty much the same. We're going to enter for configuration mode with the configure command. We're going to enter the configuration mode for the management interface, configure the appropriate settings, etc. So now that the appliance is fully booted up, the default credentials for the vThunder appliance are admin and A10, all lowercase, A10. Type in EN for enable mode. The default password is left blank, so just click enter and keep going. Now you get down to the CLI. I can type in CONF and then tab it out. For autocomplete, then I can type in INT, oops, MAN. I can tab that off if I want to for the interface management configuration. Then I'll specify an IP address 192.168.41.10 with a 24 bit mask. All right, what did I thumb finger here? Oh, my apologies. Need a space in there. All right. Then we'll add a, a default gateway because the management interface does, of course, have its own routing table and is separate from the production routing table. That's about it. I'm going to do a show run int. Configuration looks good. Now let's ping our default gateway to verify connectivity is indeed in place. The default gateway here is a layer 3 Aruba switch. Looks good. So once again, once the management interface is configured, we need to move on to implement, implementing the license. You can install the license via the CLI or the web UI. Now the way you get a license is one of three options. You can contact your local SE or your local VAR, or you can subscribe and download for a trial version. Either one of those will go through the same process. A10 Networks will ask you for the host ID or the license ID or application ID, depending on your version or appliance. You'll give them that ID, you'll email it back to them. They'll send you back the license in text format and you can either use the CLI to SCP it to the box, or you can use the GUI. Now, a lot of people don't have an SCP server ready to go. I'm going to suggest that you configure the management interface, then use the GUI to apply the license, and then drop back down to the CLI since it's much quicker. 
and I'll show you all uh, the configuration more on the CLI in video number two. So I don't have an actual license to apply an extra one at the moment, but I will show you in the GUI where it, where it is. Let me save that configuration real quick with a write mem and then exit out. Close this tab. Let's connect to the GUI. Once again, default is admin and A10 lowercase. So we'll go to system, admin, licensing, if it doesn't automatically pop up. Here's your host ID it's going to ask for. Copy and paste that and send that back to A10 in the email. They'll then send you the license, paste it into the box, click submit. Very simple, very simple. And that concludes part one. In part two, we'll actually configure the base platform configuration as well as configure the network interfaces. So stay tuned and thank you.